A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Everybody knows how scary the silence of the lambs really is. But there is something more fundamental about what Jonathan Demme does and the fear we experience is actually the end result of it. That is the sense of discomfort that is inflicted upon the audience through the masterful filmmaking techniques. Now considered one of the best horror classics ever made, The Silence of the Lambs isn't terrifying because of its gory nature, but because despite being warned about Hannibal Lecter, Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. That is exactly what he does to us. For those who have watched this film, it is known that the cannibalism of Lecter is never really shown on screen. Even the photo of the nurse whose tongue Lecter ate is never shown to the audience, but the impact is resonated through Clarice's expressions. And since the whole movie is from the perspective of Clarice, we are able to feel exactly what she feels throughout this film. And in this video, I am going to analyze the first 18 minutes of the film and explain how Jonathan Demme induces discomfort and unease using some really unique and creative methods of filmmaking. Let's consider the part where Clary Starling meets Jack Crawford in which he briefs her about Lecter. But even before that, when she enters the office waiting for Crawford, she looks around and she finds what is shown to us through the camera as it pans over a few photos of some brutally mutilated dead bodies, following the newspaper cuttings eventually revealing the headline of the serial killer. This shot is really masterful because these three words reveal everything about the images shown before. Number 1. Bill is a serial killer. Number 2. Bill has murdered 4 people before. And number 3. Bill skins people, which is what happened to the victims in those photographs. Crawford arrives and after they both sit down, they have a long conversation post-introduction where she is tasked with interviewing Lecter. Here, most of the shots are close-ups. If we notice closely, even though these are POV close-ups, Crawford looks directly at the camera while Clarice does not. This subtly tells us that unlike the men around her, she doesn't really want to talk to the audience maintaining her eye contact. Even though Clarice is really intelligent and sharp by nature, but as a woman who is looked down upon by men as objects throughout this film, she does not like to be looked at or stared at. Immediately after they get up, she turns back and asks particularly one important question. Excuse me, sir, but why the urgency? Lecter's been in prison for so many years now. Is there some connection between him and Buffalo Bill, maybe? Crawford tells her to be attentive, following which we get back to close-ups. Yes, sir. Be very careful with Hannibal Lecter. Dr. Chilton at the asylum will go over all the physical procedures used with him. Do not deviate from them for any reason whatsoever. And you're to tell him nothing personal. Now Clarice, having developed a sufficient amount of comfort with Crawford, is able to look at the camera like him whenever she talks to him throughout the movie. Immediately, we cut to the next scene with Dr. Chilton at the asylum in Baltimore. Again. The scene in Chilton's office is shot similarly, but this time, while Chilton is looking directly at the camera, the person whom he is talking to is shown only after he stops talking about Hannibal. And he looks at Clarice as we cut to her medium long shot. Clearly, Clarice is not comfortable with him staring at her. Then we cut back to Chilton directly staring at the camera as he starts flirting with her, following which we cut to the close up of Clarice. This could have been a conventional POV short reverse shot, but Clarice's eyes are not looking at the camera. Also, the close-up shot induces claustrophobia into the audience, adding to the discomfort of the character. Will you be in Baltimore overnight? Because this can be quite a fun town if you have the right guide. <laughs> now, I'm sure this is a great town, Dr. Chilton, but um, my instructions are to talk to Dr. Lecter and report back this afternoon. I see. Let's make this quick then. As Chilton starts flirting and Clary saves her by sticking to her assignment, we cut back to the medium shot of Chilton, after which we follow them out of his office to the asylum holding. Now the shots get interesting after this. As they are walking down, Chilton gives her a set of instructions while they pass two metal gates. Do not touch the glass, do not approach the glass. You pass in nothing but soft paper. No pencils or pens, no staples or paper clips in this paper. Use the sliding food carrier, no exceptions. If he attempts to pass you anything, do not accept it. Do you understand me? Yes, I understand, sir. 
but as they reach the third one he tells her an incident when a nurse was mutilated by Hannibal 10 years back I'm going to show you why we insist on such precautions on the afternoon of July 8 1981 he complained of chest pains and was taken to the dispensary his mouthpiece and restraints were removed for an EKG when the nurse leaned over him he did this to her and there is a red light shining on them as Chilton shows her the photo of the nurse the gates open and the red light intensifies we cut to a high angle close up of chilton where he terrifies us with a final line his pulse never got above 85 even when he ate her tongue they both enter with the gates closing behind them as clary tries to get rid of dr chilton if lecker feels that you're his enemy then um well maybe we'll have more luck if i go in by myself As she does so, the red light considerably decreases as Barney opens the gate to the security room, while the red light is still there on Chilton. After successfully being left alone, Clarice enters the security room and looks around. This is one of the best establishing shots in the history of movies. It is just a simple camera pan setting the tone for the asylum and what is different about it is the amount of detail behind it which is enough to freak us out for what's coming next. Next, Clarice hangs her coat and enters the asylum corridor following which Barney closes the gate behind her. The thud of which shakes her up. The amount of nervousness she feels is clearly visible through this. The sound design is to be noticed here. As Clarice walks from Chilton's office towards the security room, there are four gates, and every time the gate moves, the metal slam becomes louder, with the final one being at the maximum intensity. Another is the diegetic sound, which starts once Chilton starts telling Clarice about the nurse. We hear the sound of hollow machine sounds from the distance, but once the gates open, the sounds increase, which adds to the intensity of the scene. But as Clarice enters, this sound is accompanied by electronic beeps, a cracking sound, and other movements. Now the gates close as Clarice enters Lecter's corridor, and that's when the music starts. She walks down slowly, crossing the three cells which contain people with serious mental issues. These three people show extreme behavior, either extremely silent or extremely close or extremely active. Now since we are about to meet one of the most dangerous criminals in the world we or even Clarice might be expecting some person with the extreme of the extremes but there he stands decently smiling like a gentleman this normal behavior freaks us out despite that Clarice gathers her courage to address the serial killer and starts the conversation with him in this scene Jonathan Demme uses close ups for the same purpose that is to induce discomfort in Clarice and the audience like this scene where lecter asks Clarice to show her credentials closer please closer Now after she takes her seat most of the shots of Lecter are close ups directly staring at the camera and speaking to Clarice and the shot of a shot between Hannibal and Clarice consists of close ups and medium close ups which remain dominant throughout the scene the shots change to medium close ups of Clarice or long shot of Hannibal only when she tries to divert the topic or the level of discomfort is low Jonathan Demme does the same thing here as well while Lecter looks at the camera Clarice does not look at the camera Not only this scene but these techniques are used throughout the movie to make the audience step into the shoes of Clarice Starling. She goes through various circumstances where she is treated by men as objects or a mean of sexual desires and the makers through the use of good dialogues, cinematography, sound and music are able to bring life to the characters. The audience regardless of gender is able to feel that. and if the audience is able to feel what the character feels the film can be declared successful without any second thoughts and the oscar goes to 
the silence of the lambs.